Hey, it's, it's a shock to all of us. We, we're supposed to have woken up to celebrate uh, women today, but now we are mourning the death of Prokid. I mean, he's um, one of the most, if not the authentic rapper that has ever come out of the townships. And I'm saying it out of the townships because it was rap back in the day was more confined to the, to the suburbs, to the urban areas, to young people who could speak better English and could write nice verses. And then we had quite all that was more uh, confined to the townships. But uh, Pro Kid defied that, and he actually um, brought hip hop back into the township and made it very authentic and made it very gassy. And he refused to to follow the trend of twanging in the in, in the American tradition of rap. And and personally, I I, I think I, I'm I'm really disturbed because I signed Pro Kid for his debut album, and so I know him from way back. And um, when we signed. Pro Kid at Galo, we, he, he was the second artist to be signed by Galo following Squatter Camp. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was Mr. Selvin. And we were trying to show that there is hip hop that speaks to the generation in South Africa that speaks, that talks to the cast stories, as Les was saying now in the voice clip that we are playing. Mm -hmm. But um, one would not have imagined that at such a young age, uh, 37 years old, uh, Linda Mkise, uh, that was known as Pro Kid, would, uh, would just perish like that and um and and in the, and in the most uh, tragic manner uh, and for me you know i would not have found zulu boy if i did not sign pro kid i would not have found zagwe i mean i i found zulu boy when i went to launch pro kid in Deben at that center and then that's where i found zulu boy then i found zagwe when i was launching uh, zulu boy in Deben. and so there is this connection that i have uh, with pro kid it's, uh, he also comes from uh, Etewin, Lamonville, he's got relatives there. So mm -hmm. we have that tradition of knowing each other here in Joburg as well as back at Kai and KZN. And it, it is a tragic loss. And uh, our condolences, not just to, to the hip hop fraternity, but specific, more specifically to the family. And we will be making our way at some point in time to mm -hmm. visit the family once we know the details. Um, just listening to some of the people paying tribute to him this morning, one of those people was uh, DJ Sbu, um, who in fact was, uh, you know, said something along the lines of he was almost a trailblazer in this genre because he mixed vernacular and English. Uh, his, his songs, they, they had a message, didn't it? Yes. I mean, for instance, if you listen to his first album, Heads and Tales, uh, his song that he's respected for was Uma uh, you know, even if it's tough and even if you think you're not going to make it, but you must never lose hope, you know. And uh, that, that was a, and it was such a somber uh, song. I, you could tell that it was must have been influenced by something that had happened or maybe what he was observing in the township. Mm. It was, I mean, as you know, that hip hop really is about youth, uh, youth flight from poverty uh, for a better life, for a better uh, world. So when you see the images on video, uh, they, they are not actually rapping about what they are currently, uh, I mean, about what they are actually uh, uh, enjoying. They are, they are rapping about hope, about what they would like to see. So when you see them on um, in videos, in boats, and, in, and with nice life, it's just an aspiration because they wish to be there themselves. Mm -hmm. I always, I mean, I did my, 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 my doctorate on hip hop. Uh, I always say that it was always, it's always about youth saying, we want to move to another better world from where we are now. So what we're writing is about current experiences and then also a hope for a better future, mm -hmm. except that no one actually listens. People tend to, to dance to the beat more than listening to the message behind the music. Mm, mm. Now, Mr. Stolle, it did go quiet um, a bit, particularly from that uh, for, from his first album, Heads and Tails, the one that uh, you, you mentioned, which, by the way, I happen to have bought uh, some years ago. Um, talk to us about what happened in between, therefore, because it seems to have went silent uh, with him not really uh, giving us anything more than what we originally had. Firstly, you know. We always said the, the issue about Pro Kid uh, being the pioneer, being the illest, as they would say in hip hop language, one of the most skilled uh, uh, master lyricists 
for him not to even have won the summers, we've always said that was strange that he's never won the summers, pro kids, if I'm correct. Mm. And um, and then he obviously just went quiet. Of course, we saw him on Billboard because he was endorsing uh, certain products. I think from a corporate world point of view, he still had the name and the brand. But um, and um, the, he wasn't really out there now. I'm not sure what he was busy with, but also you recall that I left Gallo in 2005, end of September, mm. and, uh, and I left the artist there to start my own label. So they had their own life and their own journeys that they continued. I left Squatter Camp, I left Tandy Swazes, Tuetan, and all of those artists mm. left behind, and they had their own journey. So um, I only saw Pro Kid, you know, uh, my wife, my wife woke me up crying. I didn't know what she was crying about. Because we know these kids, not just at a professional level, but they are like kids. Because we, we've seen them grow. So I've, I've known Prokit even after that. I've seen him collaborating with Zulu Boy, collaborating with, uh, uh, with Zagwe. But uh, in his own solo career, I, 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 I'm not sure what had happened in that regard.